Recently, LeBron James surpassed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in all-time points scored in the NBA, and it reignited the GOAT question, greatest of all time. And in many people's mind, Kareem always will be. In 1992, on February 28th, there was a pay-per-view event and it featured half-court, one-on-one games between the Iceman, George Gervin, and Tiny Nate Archibald, Rick Barry and Connie Hawkins, and the headline event, Dr. J, Julius Irving versus Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem annihilated Dr. J, and the night before, the duo had appeared on the Arsenio Hall show talking about the event. And Dr. J, I think, kind of foreshadows his fate. He talked about Cream being so much taller, and when he started spinning around, watch out for the elbows. And they talked about the game being a down and dirty playground type of game. I would so like to see in your prime Kareem versus in your prime LeBron betting it'd be Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I don't even think LeBron could beat Lou Alcindor. Julius Irvin and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar! <laughs> I think that means you're a true legend. <laughs> um, are you all ready for this? When I saw David Thompson and Norm Nixon go down, I started thinking maybe this wasn't a good idea. <laughs> well, uh, we're, we're it touched doing... us in a deep place, too. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, one of the things it did, though, was endorse the format that we are using. We're playing half court basketball, and, you know, maybe <laughs> this means that guys in their 40s should stick to playing half court. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we really felt for David Thompson and Norm Nixon, you know, and wished them the best. But uh, I, don't, I don't really feel so I can go out and be competitive in a full court game anymore. But half court, I can be real competitive. As you find out next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> How did this idea come about? I know it's, uh, it's for a good purpose because the money is going to MFAR and the Magic Johnson Foundation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, we targeted those as uh, the charities that we want to help. But I, I guess you had a lot to do with this. You know? That's right. I came back That's here. Right. I was here May 1991. Oh, the interview, yeah. And uh, we talked about making a phone call and challenging Kareem, and I he accepted. Call. And uh, we've been working on this thing ever since then. Of course, we were working on it six months before. Man. So it's now, it's coming, now it's coming to fruition, and next Friday, you know, we'll be getting it on at the Taj Mahal. But you left yeah. out a part. Remember I said, and I would like to produce it. Yeah, you said you would like to. You just said you were going to. Oh. <laughs> well, I would like to do a lot of things, too. Cash money in your hand when you say that. Well, I'm on the air. I leave my wallet in the dressing room. You live in this town. You know about that, Arsenio. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I, but if you had given me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what's call, important man, is that call, it gets collect. done. You just didn't take my call. <laughs> as long as it gets done, that's what's important. Yeah. Have you scouted this guy and analyzed his game? Listen, we know each other a long time professionally and, and personally. Uh, what can you do? I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, you know, it's like when uh, Willie Moscone played. Uh, somebody in the pool. They, they know what you can do. Yeah. I know what he can do. He knows what I can do. It's... Now, Kareem, will you really go after him or will this be like wrestling? I mean, I know you respect and love this man. Well, I mean, will you really go after him? I'm going to go after the, the victory. You know? And if he gets in the way, then that's, <laughs> that's the way that is. I, I'm sure that uh, I might have a few sneaker marks on my shoulders, too. You know? that's, that's just the way it happens. I can, I can tell you, I plan on wearing my mouthpiece. <laughs> okay, because yeah. uh, you know I'm six six. He's seven foot two, and uh, he's a big man. He's an imposing uh, figure. His record speaks for itself. And I know when he gets in the low post, starts spinning back and forth. The elbows tend to get a little high. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, you know, I'm not I'm not averse to getting dirty, sticking my head in there. So I wear my mouthpiece. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this could be rough now that I start to think about yeah. it. Well, the other guys are serious about it, too. This is not just a, you know, one-on-one -on -one event in 
Bobby and Kareem and myself. We have uh, George and Iceman Gervin mm -hmm. versus Tiny Archibald. And uh, Rick Barry and Connie Hawkins matched up one on one. So it's a two hour program. It's well, it's going to be well worth the while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's take a quick commercial and come right back with more Dr. J and Kareem. Kareem, you've seen this man play uh, close up and from afar. What is the most memorable thing you've ever seen him do on the wood? Well, uh, I had the fortune or misfortune to see several of them. Where I remember him looking like he somebody dropped him from the ceiling, <laughs> <laughs> something like this. On my 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 behalf, my reaction, seeing the bottom of his shoes a few times. <laughs> Was the game the game that uh, Grover Washington wrote "Let It Flow"? That was uh, that was uh, when we played the Lakers for the World Championship, nineteen eighty. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, you know, I made a move on the baseline and just shot a little reverse layup. A little reverse yeah, layup. Little reverse they wrote layup. a song about it, and we we still <laughs> yeah, see it at Grover, least once a week. Grover was inspired because you know he was he was our guy in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got your guy in L.A. or whatever, but. Uh, you know, Grover's the man there, and, and he was inspired to compose a tune called Let It Flow. Mm -hmm. He called it Let It Flow for Dr. J. It was on his Wine Light album, which mm -hmm. was a double platinum or yeah. what have you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you asked me about, you asked him about what he's seen me do. I've seen him, you know, do things uh, ever since he was a schoolboy at Power Memorial in New York City. And, uh, you know, I think probably, because I was asked a question a little earlier today about a memorable moment, and, you know, seeing uh, Kareem, uh, Played championship caliber basketball at age 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. <laughs> you know, that to me is mind blowing. I mean, I, I played a long time. I played 16 professional seasons, but at age 37, you know, that was it. I knew I couldn't play at my standard anymore. It was time for me to move on and, and do something else. But just watching him keep going after I had thought somewhere in my mind that, that he was going to leave before me mm -hmm. just uh, gave me renewed respect for him. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you all call this schoolyard ball. Is that the subtitle for the show? Not necessarily, but okay. um, I think we, what we're dealing with is part of the, the schoolyard code mm -hmm. of in your face, <laughs> get this if you can. So everybody relates to that. I don't care if they're playing it on a uh, hoop on the side of a barn in Indiana or in the streets of Philly or in the streets of L.A. or it doesn't matter in, in, in some uh, gym up in the Pacific North, Northwest, you know, hmm. where we get all our hardwood. I mean, it, this is an American game that we all relate to. And uh, at one point in, in your life, every, every American, I don't care if it was just in P.E., one time they tried to hoop heave the ball through the hoop. I mean, it's our game, and uh, we think we have something unique there. I, I would agree. Um, you know, it is unique. Uh, we're not trying to steal anyone else's thunder. It's not like we're trying to turn back the clock and go back and play against, you know, the Young Turks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're playing with peers. Uh, he and I, the other guys on the undercard, <clears throat> we own our own event in association with one another, with our respective uh, companies. Mm -hmm. uh, my group in Philadelphia, his group here in Los Don Angeles. Don King's not in this. Uh, no. <laughs> Don's not in it. He'll probably be in the audience, because uh, I'm sure he's interested in what's going on, because it's a pay-per-view event. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we have underwritten the project ourselves, so we control our own destiny, and we have designated what charity is going to, you know, benefit from our endeavor. So it's our responsibility, and we're not, as I said before, trying to steal someone else's thunder. This is the second 100 years of basketball, and we're just expanding, you know, on the horizon that's out there for the game. And uh, I think it's going to be truly unique because of some of those reasons. Yeah. Well, let me tell them when they can see this unique experience. Uh, it's pay-per-view February 28th. And I guess they call their cable company, right? Yeah, it's 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, so it'll be on here at uh, 6 p.m. in L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, then a replay at 8 p.m. in L.A., but 9 Eastern, then 11, and uh, Friday the 28th from Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's well, called The Clash of the Legends. Well, that's a perfect <laughs> title, and I hope it's a tie. <laughs> Kareem Abdul-Jabbar.
boy. I'll see you all in 23 hours. Oh, oh you know, what? I was noticing how hairstyles have changed. Uh, Sandy, let me see the photos. Look at your monitors here. Look at how uh, hairstyles have changed uh, prior to this pay-per-view event. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's a secure looking fella there. You didn't, you didn't know that we used to be young at one time. Well, you know, I remember vaguely, but uh, I can't wait for this event. What is it, February 28th? February 28th, that's right. Friday night, just before the leap year. Don't forget it. Peace, think number one. watching Cleveland Live Music. Don't worry, this cop that's approaching is not going to interrupt great uploads. He hopefully supports the channel as much as you folks who hit the subscribe button do. There's Patreon and GoFundMe information that I doubt he's going to do. You can. But subscribe. Keep watching. That's all that counts.